why did you do a PhD? Well, that's a good question to start with. I was 50 when I started it, so I wasn't exactly at the beginning of my career. And I'd <clears throat> started a new job at Warwick University as a senior teaching fellow. And I was surrounded by people who were either doing research and or had done a doctorate. So that really normalised it. And I only had a part-time job at Warwick and one of my colleagues told me about the ESRC funding. So I thought that I'd apply for it. And I thought if I get the funding, I'll do the PhD. <laughs> and I did get the funding, so I did the PhD, that was decided. So I got seven years part-time funding at about £10,000 a year, and that's tax-free. And they also paid my fees on top of that, so it's pretty generous, I think. Funding's quite competitive, so I think I was lucky to get it, but I, I couldn't, and I wouldn't have done it without it. Why did it take you so long? Seven years, it's a long time, isn't it? My life completely changed in that time. Uh, so a full-time PhD is usually three to four years and a part-time five to seven. So I was within the normal range, just about. I think if I'd really pushed myself, I could have done it faster. But during that time, a lot happened in my personal life. And I also did longitudinal research. So I collected data over a five year period. So I suppose those were the two reasons that it took me that long. Did you work on it all the time during that time? Well, no, it's the short answer. Um, but it, I guess it was always on the back burner at least. I was always trying to do some reading or I was thinking about it. And there were definitely times, many times of course, when it was definitely the top priority in my life. During the PhD, there were a few way posts during the process. I had an upgrade panel after two years and another progress panel after four. You have to submit 10,000 words and then you have to defend it to a couple of academics. I was lucky to have a fantastic supervisor in Steve Mann. He was great because he really helped me and pointed me in the right direction when I needed it, but he also trusted me to get things done and he didn't breathe down my neck too much when I wasn't quite so productive. What was good about it? Finishing. I'm only half joking about that. It was a lot of work. But that aside, it was I think one of the best things about it for me was being involved in research myself when I was supervising MATSOL students who were also doing their research. So I know a lot more about research, especially qualitative research, than I did when I started work at Warwick, even though I'd done my research for my MA before that. If I'm being really honest, I think I also really liked telling people that I was doing a PhD. So within the university, it's just completely normal, not very remarkable, in fact, kind of bottom rung of the ladder stuff. But in the outside world, of course, you get some kudos for it. What was the worst thing? Writing the thesis. It was such hard work. <laughs> You obviously do a lot of writing all the way through, but early this year, I just decided if I'm gonna finish on time, I really just have to put everything on one side and get down and write it. So I stopped making the videos, I stopped doing the newsletter, I stopped any other kind of work, and I literally just sat in a room day after day for four months writing a chapter at a time and sending it to my supervisor and getting feedback and rewriting it and then writing another chapter. And every time I started a new chapter, eight chapters, it felt like beginning to climb the mountain again. It was quite a mental challenge. And I think in lots of ways, the only thing that kept me going was knowing how much work I'd already put into it 
how close I was to the end and and I really felt that I just couldn't let Steve, my supervisor, down. Though That actually really did keep me going. But I'm really glad I did do it. Now it's over. <laughs> Would you advise me to do one? Well, I guess that depends on what you want to do it for. If you're the kind of person who just loves research and wants a challenge, then, you know, go for it. But it's a big commitment of time and energy and resources, I'd say, unless you've got a real purpose for it. And the main purpose to do it would probably be if you want an academic job. Now, I can highly recommend academic work. I loved working at Warwick. I, I had lovely colleagues, lovely students, but I was quite lucky to get that job without a PhD. Most of the other applicants did have one. You probably often need one, or it's certainly desirable for work at that level. What are you gonna do now? Probably not much more research. <laughs> I've written a journal article and a chapter about this study, and if you really want some bedtime reading, you can find my thesis on my website. It's guaranteed, I promise you, to induce sleep. So I don't really feel like I've got to publish anything more. But I did learn a lot from doing it. I learned a lot about mentoring, that was the topic. But I also learned a lot about how people learn. I think that's more generally applicable for stuff that I still do. And I learned a lot about taking on a big project and seeing it through. And I really enjoyed working with my mentors. And I suppose finally, the truth again is, the rather vain truth is that actually, I really like being able to call myself Dr. Joga Conga. So, you know, if it's up for you, so if you feel it's for you, then I'd say go for it, but maybe it's good to have a real purpose. I hope that maybe that was interesting if you had any thoughts about why I've been doing this for so long. And um, yeah, see you in my next videos. Bye-bye.